You are listening to The Big Scuba. This is an audio only episode. What are you doing? What are you doing watching this? What have you stumbled upon? It's not a recipe programme. This is not the secret of what's happening with EastEnders. This is a little podcast which is going to take you underwater with myself, Mike Valentine, underwater cameraman on all the Bond films, etc. And I'd like you to come with us for a little while and share the hidden beauty of the underwater world. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Big Scuba podcast. My name's Ian. And my name is Gemma. So, welcome back. This is episode 38, Gemma. 38, yes. Let me just tell you, 38, a little bit of... Now, we had some uh, message in, in the week, about last uh, episode... Number 37. 37, <laughs> about why I couldn't read that out, and he made a very good point. Hello to you. Uh, he obviously did a bit. He, yeah, and it's good to know our listener is out there uh, listening. listening in. Taking right. Out. Did you know that 38 is the atomic number of strontium? Yeah. Have you ever heard of strontium? Because I certainly have. So if you're out there and you know what that is, let us know. <laughs> Be honest, it's fine. We can live with that. But anyway, so that's 38. That's an important fact of yeah. 38. Is. So there we go. So, um, okay. So last episode was Mike Valentine from yeah. Valentine. What an entertaining guy. Um, Makes you smile. Yeah, it is. You know, he is. And um, we're going to be putting that on YouTube because part of that of that chat, he, he's shown us different Pictures, things. And yeah. I think once we get this uh, episode out... Um, we and can, his, yes. <laughs> his facial expressions. Yeah, very... Uh, um, an, uh, animated. Animated, <laughs> yes, so, uh, is the word. So very good, very entertaining, and we'll make it very good, uh, something good to watch on yeah. YouTube as well. So, so look out for that. We'll put that on the social media comes out. Um, now, with this episode, we try and keep our... We try and keep our things to a family show. It's a family show, Jen. It is, yes. It is, you know. So you may find a few little sound effects. Out. There is, yeah. But it's all done in good spirit. And obviously we don't have to... No, our episode's <laughs> never about naming and shaming. No, so, because... But we like to keep yeah. things a family show. And uh, so it's all done in good spirit. And the guys, everyone's checked <laughs> and everyone's happy. So yeah, you know, we all crack on with that. But before we do crack on with the episode, Jem, what we need to do is say hello to... To the new patrons join us. Yes, hello to you yeah. guys thank you very much for joining us um we can't do this without their support yeah, you the know, yeah so um uh, you know we always need anyone who's happy to support us that's all two dollars yeah price for a cup of coffee you know and a couple of bucks as they say you know and come and join <laughs> us yeah yeah and we'll give them a sh give it give you a shout out as well also, I want to say hello to our lovely friends and uh, partners. So, hello to the guys at Fourth Element, Duo Two, World. Brief World, uh, Mares, uh, Parolin, uh, Blue, and O3. Yep. Thank you very much. And also, if you are in the marketplace for looking to buy a new camera, we can do you a good deal on a Parolin. Yes, so, that's really exciting. Yeah, all you've got to do is go to our uh, show notes. Or any of our YouTube and have a look through the notes and you'll see a link there click on that link that will take you to the website so have a look there first then go to the, okay yeah, there's a new camera called yeah there is order. yeah it's yeah. really smart and uh, really whizzy and a really whizzy app so that's the power lens also if you are in the marketplace or a drone mm -hmm. have a look at again our show notes there's some links in there to uh, get a good offer um, from a DJI drone. That covers a range, does it? There is, yeah. So look out for the Mavic Air, uh, and but there's, t there's there's a few on there, and sometimes those links change depending on the deal at the time. Have a look at our show notes. Uh, you're going to be putting them on the yeah, they'll be under the show podcast, notes, aren't they? Um, podcast yeah. pack, and you can get some discount. How about that? Well, it's good timing to lock down. So yeah, well, let's, let's just talk about that very briefly and then we don't need to mention it anymore because there's no point keep going over no. the same old news. So obviously we're on the eve of recording this. I've actually gone into another 
Second uh, in, lockdown. Well, in in England, so yeah. uh, another lockdown. So kind of it, really. Or well, scooped up until... Uh, uh, but it does, you know, we can still exercise and things like that. We've yeah. got time on our hands, which is great. It is, but obviously, you know, kind of scupper things for our plans that we had for scuba diving winter diving winter diving really so but it's a necessity and that's what ne touch wood it so be. as it stands we should become on the 2nd of december as it stands let's hope that's still got is some the good case news. yes that's, <laughs> anyway we don't keep going on about that so we just thought we'd mention it on this episode because you know? yeah. we're all in the same boat aren't we we're all in, yeah. you know if you live if you listen to this in england that you know we're all going to be going into it at the same, so that's that. So we haven't really done a huge amount uh, since our last episode. Not we? diving, not no. diving. Apart from getting you know episodes out and product. We have yeah, so we've got some product reviews, and obviously we have been working as well. At the point so yeah. Anyway, so that's enough of us running on. Oh, apart from, I will just say. If you've got any feedback, if you've got some comments, if you've got some questions for us, it's brilliant when our listener does write in with a, or a question. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we've had quite a few weeks, which has yeah. been great. Yeah, and also we're always looking for new bands. You know, we're always looking for new music. We can go to the free sites uh, and grab uh, music off, off the peg. We can, you know, and it's an easy way of doing it try not to uh, no because you know, if, if you want to advertise your band and you know so if you're way. in a band if you sing a song if you play the fiddle actually no oh, no, no. no not if you play the but if you play something else <laughs> play the guitar perhaps uh then get in contact and uh, maybe we can uh, help spread your word spread the music spread the music so there we are yeah and we'll just give grace west carter shaman competition well done, Grace. Well done. <laughs> so the hair storm punch. I did have my eye on that, Grace. Actually, <laughs> Red your... no, I ain't got the legs like, for it. Unfortunately, <laughs> only we get. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, think of Earth. Uh, well done, Grace, and thank you for everyone who entered our little competition yeah. about that. Yeah, and thank you to Miranda as well for uh, picking the winner, and thank you to Fourth Element for putting forward that prize. Yeah, Beautiful prize. Lovely prize. I did wonder if that looked, because that was quite, I was looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well done, Grace. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Right, right. so we okay. Yeah, so stand back, uh, stand brace by. yourself, and here is some more like Valentine. Enjoy. predominantly for all your productions or do you go on location no it, it's there are many times when we would go abroad maybe one of the places was is actually Malta mm -hmm. so that for instance we did a um, we did a TV production called Sense8 which was very famous a few years ago on Netflix where the director who had been a man and with his brother had directed the Matrix series, had had a sex change operation, L Lana Wachowski, and has become a woman now, but she had written and direct, was directing this fantastic um, weird series called Sense8, and she wanted um, to introduce the new series by having all the lead actors underwater in the sea with us filming them individually swimming and reacting so there we are in Malta with the sea where you can't control wind, tide, current, sun um, creatures of the deep um, and uh, with, the, with the real actors but of course mainly being Hollywood actors where they'd been swimming all their lives or whatever it was fantastic um, that was an interesting uh, experience. But there you go. It's still the same rules that whether you're training a student in a swimming pool and then you go to Stony Cove and then you go off to, um, uh, say, Scotland, if you're really lucky to see some the Hispaniola the, and all the other amazing wrecks up there with a bit more visibility, or you go off to um, the, the Red Sea. Um, some of the most dangerous divers we ever had w were British. 
<laughs> I'm glad we're on a Zoom call. You can't smack me. Um, but they were some of the most dangerous. And it wasn't their fault. Why? Because in learning in the UK, from one, two, three, four, five metre visibility, to suddenly go to the Red Sea where there's 30 metres of this, where there's the most amazing colours and life. And look, there's the Dun Raven or some amazing shipwreck. Oh, I'm just going to nip down to the propeller. <laughs> well, that's a 45 metres, matey, and you've spent an hour. <laughs> This is what I told Gemma about what I said. Hey! <laughs> We've all got stories. You can be down. I was on the um, Yolanda Reef. Oh, Yolanda, yeah, yeah. yeah and then the Ras Mohammed uh, Nature Reserve. Yeah. We were down at like 30 metres, thinking, we, we need to go up because. <laughs> exactly. Hit by them, we need to come up. And it's so easy to be down at 30 metres. Yeah, I've got all this to look forward and to. You, where <laughs> you have. I mean, it's so easy and being a complete, um, I'm sure you've got a beep you can put over, but being a complete, um, when I was younger, and you know when you're young, you're bulletproof, you, there's nothing, you can do anything, you can literally walk on water, it's not a problem. So like an idiot, I decided, well, I'm going to do a deep dive, and of course it's on air. Now. I remember the reef running out with it just turning into sand, so that's already 60 odd metres, and I managed to hit 94 metres on a mechanical gauge, so it's probably 100 metres on air, Ooh. and I remember getting oxygen poisoning so that I was kneeling down and just going down a half a metre at a time, and then suddenly my vision becoming very noisy, black and white, and then it going into a tunnel, yeah. oxygen poisoning. The only thing I didn't get, um, and sadly for my friends and just as well for me, was going to fit where I would lose the reg. Mm -hmm. And that was at 94 meters. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'll never go there again, but I've been there and I've seen what it's like. Um, and that's the danger and the beauty uh, of, of um, swimming with crocodiles. Mostly you get away with it, you might not. No. <laughs> You know that we i had to do a thing in south africa with um um a really nice commercial for volvo where there's a girl inside a cage but the cage is in the shape of a volvo four-wheel drive so the girl is in there and the cage is a metaphor you're safe because you're inside a volvo yeah. but i'm looking with the producer i'm looking at all the exterior shots with the five meter great white swimming round and saying to the producer Oh, wow, how are you going to film that? No, how are you going to film it? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So like an idiot, again, being stupid, I, managed, I got out of the cage and was doing the wide shot, praying to the great whites. There were three of them. If you don't hurt me, I will never come back. I'll never come back down here and I'll never get involved with you guys again and I was shooting and I felt that which is the bow wave of a five meter going past obviously he's looking at my monitor going yeah are you sure <laughs> no I would have seen I, I like that don't what don't you don't you like it well if you want that you know anyway and I managed to shoot it got away with it and I was offered a lot of money to go back on another film and I turned it down I've never been back to South Africa to get out of the cage because <laughs> You know, you can walk across the M1 with your eyes shut, and if you make it one way, you shouldn't really walk back. <laughs> no, <that's true. laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm going on all about the stuff that we do. But the, the way it works is we've got the camera underwater, and so I would light the scene, and we use a lot of LED lighting underwater that I've sort of developed, um, and they, that can be a nice soft fill light underwater. But then the a feed from the camera goes up to the surface and it's given here to, uh, this is my gaffer, this is my wife Francoise, and people sit here so they can see on the monitors what the output of my camera is. Mm -hmm. Then there's a microphone and Foz will speak on the microphone to the underwater loudspeaker mm -hmm. so she can speak to everyone at once. There's no point in putting a private talk back to my ear so that I might hear, unless I'm directing the scene, uh, the, other, the main director saying, oh, that's nice, can you push in a bit closer or whatever. 
because that means that who tells the safety divers, the actor, the special effects people, the lighting technicians. So we use an underwater loudspeaker and Francoise talks to everybody at once. You in a room full of people, if somebody comes in and says, oh Gemma, that, we've got a little article we need you to do off in, um, off in the Pacific. Would you like to come along, you know, and you're like, no, she's just hurt her leg or the poor thing. I, I, I don't know. Um, and you're like, oh. um, you can ignore what they're saying because we as human beings get to pick up only what we want to hear. So it's not annoying for everyone to hear at once instructions to just one group of people. Special effects. Could we have more bubbles? Mm -hmm. um, Kira, when you're hanging there dead, um, could you um try not don't move um quite so much when you're when you're just sort of hanging there for atonement this this shows what my camera's like with a, a tv monitor so i can see um whatever the camera is pointing at that's really great so the yeah. camera can, can then be in, in, for pressure yeah that's an underwater housing which we can put in any film camera or video camera depending on what we're shooting on right but, but the point is, on the surface are my, you know, the full team, makeup, wardrobe, hair, um, uh, continuity, uh, Francois, special effects, the video recording uh, people, um, special effects of different types, um, medical, because we always have a medical person with us for any little uh, problem on the set. Um, and the idea is, so it's a whole team of people but with with me and the white gloves having the fun of sort of moving the camera around what a question for you okay so do you look you know I, I presume with a lot of the stuff that you do underwater and how you do how you work with lighting and sound now uh, that's come from trial and, and error and because the the technology wasn't there so yes. when you look around at you know at the power lenses um other you know manufacturers who make cameras and yes. also lighting systems yeah you look at that and think hey we thought of that 10 years ago or um to be know, honest they, that, they, that make life easier for us yeah i think um because i've been messing around since the middle 70s and having to work out how do flash guns work underwater yeah. or usually they didn't how do how does the camera keep the water out Mm. and not go in what are the optical problems um, of um, a lens underwater why use a flat port with the lens and um, as opposed to a dome port because again with respect people taking photographs for fun and pleasure if it's slightly out of focus um, they can go on holiday again to the Red Sea or go back to Stony next weekend and take pictures again. Whereas if we're on a, an X hundred million dollar film, like the latest, um, uh, maybe the latest Terminator film, if my stuff doesn't look too good, you know, they're very friendly. The producers say, oh, Mike, you've had a problem. Go to Switzerland on us for a month. Yeah. Don't feel bad. Everything's fine. No, here's your testicle floating around and <laughs> and you're not getting it back so but to be honest because i had made 10 short films before i started working in the industry um and having written produced photographed and directed them and wanting to get them sold and out there i'd gone to my own film school if you like to mm -hmm. learn all of the technical problems of telling a story underwater and i applaud any um anyone now uh, with all that that um you know using little leds underwater which we were doing years ago but then with respect somebody who is um got an, a nice ordinary job and doing diving as a hobby they're like well, well it's all right for you you work on hundred million dollar films you've probably got the money to develop those things and that's not true because <laughs> um if i went um to many of these films and say I've got an idea could I have a hundred grand and we'll 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 experiment with um, trying to get a new I've technical idea working you will get a bit of development money yeah. but by now because 
all the camera is a waterproof box. It's the same way that all we want coming out of our bodies underwater is, is perhaps the air we breathe out. All you want with your underwater camera is no water to go in. And it's as sexy as that can be with some of the latest technology. It's actually simple. If you've got lights underwater, you just want them to work. We only, the only difference between myself and some of the companies you've mentioned, we just happen to be working on a much, much um, bigger scale. Yeah. And so I'm rapidly, because it's not as if I'm rude reading here what's on telly tonight. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Um, I'm going through all my pictures to try and give you an, an example. Well, nearly on, everyone who dives these days, is, you know, if you, if you go diving anywhere abroad or in the, in the UK, yeah, everyone's got a camera of some description. Or you move on to that. A you bit, know, bit, yeah. Or you, yeah, or you move on to that. So nearly everyone who dives is a, a mini film producer. Yeah, do you know what? And 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 seriously, um, I hope they all die. I don't want anyone else who's more talented than me, or rather, be. Oh, that's really lovely for them. <laughs> but I know it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Because years ago. What did you do with your diving hobby when I was a kid in the 70s or whatever? Well, you might go on shipwrecks, you might try and rip off a bell if you're really lucky or find a torpedo or whatever. Um, or, or not many people were interested in fish, but, you know, it was more about look at things. Yeah. But now that's the joy of these little GoPros or whatever. Um, but in a way, that's the worst moment for me, because if I go and have a meeting with a production company and they say, oh, we want you to work with um, in a room full of gold bars and we want the water to go right up to the ceiling and we want the actors to come through a lockout and go in and steal the gold. But of course, I've been diving on holiday and I know that it's very easy to do that. Really? <laughs> so we did a little production um, for Netflix where we wanted um, a room full of gold. And to give the impression the water's rising, we, um, we built all the gold in a set and lowered the set down into the water yeah. so that it looked like it, the look, it looked like the... Um, the gold bars were doing it and in fact here you can see in the background that's the set this is my underwater camera which is open here's a second camera all in bits that's that's ready to go underwater and then in the background we see the set and that's lowered into the water what's the gold actually made of um the wrong stuff that's why we wasted a whole week waiting to stop the gold bars going blip, 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 blip. I said, why don't you put them in a bucket when you're making them the Spanish lovely people? And that was on Netflix, and that was the highest viewed Spanish drama ever seen in the world on Netflix, and it was called Casa de Papel, or Money Heist. Mm. And so we had to shoot the underwater um, sequence for that. Um, and again, who's built a room full of gold and had it sunk yeah. in the... Huh? And so all the time you're overcoming problems, but you can normally, you can never turn around and say to the producers if it's all going wrong, which it many times does, obviously, uh, oh, this is really difficult. Mm. Have you worked with Crystal and Christopher Nolan? Um, the, you know, that was so funny. Um, we were going to for a sequence that wasn't shot for uh, Tenant. Right. But, um, but I'm sure in the, in the future, he knows of us, certainly, I, I, I know that to be true. He's, um, not great, he's not a big one on the CGI. He's, he's all no, happy. but that's the great thing with us. A lot of our stuff we try and do for real yeah. in the water. Like, if you've got a bottle, there's our vodka bottle um, for, a, for a commercial. And so there's, my, there's the guy setting it. That's myself a camera. But here are these, these... I mean, when you say people using little lights on their camera, you can see the size of these. And this is um, a typical setup for us where they use, these lights all work underwater. But with ours, they can dim 100%. They can be switched between um, um, CTO daylight, so it's colour temperature orange, so either tungsten or daylight, or put on any, any colour um, in between. And then we can also use those lights. If we've got, for instance, a Miss Peregrine school for um, peculiar children, 
you can put them all behind a big green screen so that that's a backlit green screen. Mm. So there's no bubbles to mask the light going on uh, the screen. But the only problem is when you're working on something like that, you need between four and 700 of them, wow. possibly beyond most people's weekend uh, budget for having a play and doing things like that. Um, but it does give you the opportunity of, um, of uh, creating magic. I'm desperately, um, desperately looking for me. You know, I had these all lined up to show you, and then um, can, we, can we talk about your safety divers for a moment? So, oh, the safety divers—they're not better looking than me. They don't know what they're doing. They're idiots. Um, what level divers are they? So, how do you? Become they're all. They're all um, HSC. It's changed very slightly. Um, HSC Part Four, Part Three, I think it is now, where they changed the. It's the same thing, but they changed the nomen nomenclature for it. But they've all, anyone working underwater within the UK um, has to be an HSE commercial diver. Right. Many times people would say to us, oh, look, Mike, um, I I've got my paddy. I've got my YMCA Nowy, you know, whatever the, the latest things are with, with semi-professional diving. But that's ignored. You have to be an HSC part four minimum diver. Then you, yeah, which I am as well. And I have to pass a commercial diving course every year. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah, look in your garden, that garden home. It's leaning over because the 50 quid is under that in one of us, you know. Anyway, um, so the whole point is to work in the industry, people have to go off to one of the few places in UK waters now um, and do a part four or an HSC equivalent now and then you try and beg borrow steel and try and get in but the safety divers the ones that we use in U stage are run by a lovely guy called Dave Shaw now Dave Shaw and I designed U stage yeah. But he it works there permanently, and in fact, although it's owned by Pinewood, mm -hmm. it's his underwater facility, and he is one of the world's leading commercial people. And he has his own company where they'll do everything from cleaning the lakes out in the Royal Parks to raising submarines from, from wreck finders or whatever, all the way down to doing all the marine safety on all the bonds and things like that. And all his divers are fantastic because they're not poncy film people like me going, oh, it's going to look lovely. The shark's just going to bite your hand off, Ma. You know, they're there going like, just ignore Mike, listen to me, I'll keep you alive. Um, and they are there on a one-on-one -on -one basis to look after people. But of course, over the years, from looking after children on Harry Potter underwater, all the way through to 75, 80 year old people we've had on some things, all the way through to um, uh, ships with 20 people on board, completely sinking down, which we made for ITV, the Martianess disaster, which was never released for legal reasons. There were different factions um, of people who lost family on that and one faction disagreed with the production and therefore they weren't allowed to release the film. But we still shot it with a, what in effect was the Marchioness sinking with the people on board and doing all the safety of that. Um, so all of those people are one on one looking after everybody so that individually and they've all had such experience with you know if you go to a, a, a diver in in the uk and say well would you help us with a bit of diving yeah what are you going to do we've got this bus going in the water and we're going to trap three people inside it and that's interesting isn't it because the hse are all about the safety mm -hmm. how safe can we make this whereas we we're trying to kill people all the time for a living. And, and that's an interesting one. How do you film someone who's supposed to drown? And because well, they're such good actors, you're like, you know, Eva Green stuck in that lift. Where, uh, is, she, is she drowning? Is she acting? But then they have a special sign, maybe something like that, which means I'm not acting anymore. <laughs> Get me out of here or whatever. Or give me my air supply. And that's the secret. That's my job. 
um, on behalf of the productions on all the movies I've worked on to make it look exciting, dangerous and real because it is exciting, dangerous and real. And if we can push the envelope and do things that a weekend diver would never dream of doing, you know, you're in that if it's still there, the cockpit of the aeroplane at Stony Cove, well, with us, yeah. it would roll off the ledge and go down <laughs> with, with, with a busload of school kids inside. <laughs> Quite right. Um, <laughs> so that, that's, the, that's the difference. That, what is your favourite thing to film? Um, um, something where production leave me alone. Now, I know that sounds weird, but because we live in a little bit of a nanny state uh, where everything is safety, 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 how are you going to shoot safely a girl who falls a hundred feet off a cliff down into the water of a lake, sinks down with two arrows stuck in her and she's drowning with all the bubbles coming out of her mouth and then going to look vacant, you, you know, if you said that's the HSC, they'd say, you know, you were shutting you down tomorrow. You can't do it <laughs> or, or whatever. So when production say we've heard you guys are the best or very good. And that's the collective team, you know, Dave Sean on his diving, myself with technical, etc. Francoise with all of her production skills to, to make it all work. Um, you can push the boundaries. It's a bit like I think when they bring out the RAF might buy a new jet and they get a test pilot in who is like, you, you can't pull out from um, less than 10,000 feet and you are forbidden to try. And yet in reality, they're going to push that to find out what you can really do. That's our responsibility. We push the limit and film to make it look fantastic and exciting and dangerous and real. And obviously we do it um as safely as possible but you know you've got you've got james bond who's going to fall through some ice and 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 attack a guy and choke him well how do you build the ice but that's from and that was all done at the east this is all this is all made of wax mm -hmm. all this ice here and then this is reinforced round the hole and then um he falls through and then you go one step further because these are the opening titles, and that's how. Oh, I shouldn't show you that. That's what is, that the, is that the new one? <laughs> you oh. didn't see anything. Nothing to see here. Move along. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? You've you you you've you've got to scratch your head and go. You can't have Kira Knightley or or on a Clint Eastwood film or 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 anything with people going like, oh, watch out, the sharks there. Like sensible people. Well, we won't go in the water. Oh yeah, you're right. Hello, we will be back with Mike Valentine in a moment. But don't forget to check out our audio book with Andy Torbett, another action man, a 007 stunt man. He speaks about his journey down to the Britannic. We have terrible weather, high wind, and you often get the problem um, of Key Island where Britannic is, you get big problems with the wind. And we had 10 days, well actually we had seven days, and the wind was, was too bad to dive. So the BBC said, OK, we'll give an extension of three days, but if, it if you can't dive by day 10, that's it, come home, shoot's over. And in day 10, the wind dropped enough, but the current picked up. And the captain, this Russian captain was like, mm, not sure, not sure, not sure. So we got kitted up, we sat, you know, in, in the Greek summer, fully kitted up, dry suits, free breathers, just waiting for him to go, OK, go. And we're going to like literally throw ourselves off the boat before he could change his mind. And uh, at two in the afternoon, he said, OK, go. And we all just got off. Um, and uh, myself and three Americans, and we it was the 11th of June, and the 11th of June is significant because it is not only my birthday, as uh, it is also Jacques Cousteau's birthday. Wow. Not the same year, I hasten to add, but the same day, <laughs> yeah. I was Britannic on my birthday and Jacques Cousteau's birthday, so that was pretty cool. Right, back to Mike Valentine. Oh, can we get in? Can we hug one? Can we kiss one? Oh, one's got a bit of a toothache. Can we reach in the mouth? Oh, look, hang on a minute, Terry. Here's the problem. Look, he had a dodgy tooth. 
So how have you found, um, obviously people come to you to make films, how have you, are you finding they're pushing the boundaries more and more to more extreme things that even are making you think well? Yes, I think, I think the honest answer is that we're able to get closer to some of the ridiculous requests we get. Um, you know, like, for instance, not a good film. Please don't see this film. Um, but Basic Instinct 2 with Sharon Stone and, um, and uh, Ken the, the uh, Cullimore, I think it was, inside. And it goes off into um, the water in Docklands. And there you've got the real people. You've got to have water coming in, completely filling up the car. But hang on a minute, they're trapped inside and then they want to open the electric window and because it works on DC, you can. And so the window opens, but they've got to get out. But hang on, they've got a seatbelt strapping them down. All of a sudden the car's got to change angle. Maybe it's going over weird like that. What? You know, so you can, all you do is you break it all down. And you just think, no, that's the safest way of doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that. Because whenever you haven't got the camera looking at someone, only the actor, there's room for the safety person. Unless you're doing a big track in and then you can hide airlines inside or put um, all sorts of safety devices and also safety devices to raise the car quickly. Or you can have a train underwater, uh, which we did for a film with Europa. Um, which starred the same guy that was in the big blue. I mean, look at that. I said to him, oh, matey boy, the, the American um, actor uh, in the big blue, I said, you were playing the part of a guy who was swimming down 60 odd feet more, and yet it's you. Why, how come you were able to do it? And he said, well, because the guy did. You know, he's an actor playing the part of someone who did it. Yeah. And you think, wow. But then that's the danger because the actors will push themselves too much mm -hmm. and sometimes you've got the opposite problem you've got to hold them back where in just one sequence they're supposed to try the door and then we move on to get them coming out the back window but without telling anyone they play the whole scene and go off and try and get out the back window and jam themselves in the back of the car and you're like oh no 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 never said that um so you, you, that's what you've, you've always got to take you've got to be the audience because if you're too safe nothing's on the screen if you're too dangerous well not everyone goes to a wedding but everyone seems to go to a funeral so you've got to be there at, with your team and go like the idiot let's do this let's do this and the safety team saying yeah we can do that or actually we can't but we could do this instead yeah because we've got to put the audience on the edge of their seat um and may, even if it's netflix on our big tellies or whoever at home you've got to you know that's the third dimension that we're working in because we work in 3d it's the width of the screen and the height of the screen but my responsibility with with all the other crew is to reach out with emotion and touch people's hearts mm. Yeah. Just send money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you finding you're getting a lot of people coming into into the industry that are sort of previous divers or? We we regularly get phone calls from divers, um, but you know what? I guess Mr. Cumberbatch, for instance, you know, great dive, a, a great actor. Um, just come on the scene um, you know great young actor can you imagine all his family oh my niece my nephew my cousin oh hi um, I, I, I saw you in Melrose or whatever he was in you know uh, in the supermarket oh you're getting loaves of bread my daughter's an actress can she come and it, it is uh, it is a bit of a problem that there are only so many jobs and we have to use the people who are the most experienced. Mm. It doesn't mean that we don't take in people um, if we can now and again. There's a, there's a lovely girl called um, Dot and she's in a commercial that we made up in um, Fort William. We're underneath a pretend oil rig. So we've got them all their hard hats on, their Kirby Morgans, whatever. And they're cutting through chain, the commercial divers, and then this diver standing in a, in, a, in a little frame box 
goes up through the moon pool of the vessel sits is helped to sit down sits down and they take the the, the curvy more of the hair and then all the hair just falls down and it's a girl <laughs> a really pretty girl because you say commercial diver and it's always right see you pal some hairy ass diver no it's this beautiful girl who's a commercial diver and in real life she was doing all of the proper commercial diving stuff with us filming like whoa don't wave the torch too close to the camera you know um and i offered her a job because i thought if someone has gone through the, the, the you know the full north sea routine uh, yeah. um then she doesn't work with us all the time because obviously we're not working all the time but she's come and worked with us and i've used the sexism um, angle to great effect because a lot of people aren't expecting a, a lovely long-haired girl to be capable of moving lights building the set pushing things around or perhaps doubling for the actress or being nice to the girl under the, the actor underwater and say yeah you're going to be okay with them thinking well if you can do it because we as sort of roughy tufty boys are supposed to be able to do this you know so that's using the weird me too thing from the other point of view of saying anything to put people's mind at rest and make them feel that they're in a safe environment well we've got a, a girl with long hair if she can do it you can do it to some guy who's like crying in the corner because he can't put his head under the water oh whoa oh never said that another nugget <laughs> yeah. another nugget <laughs> um and some of the actors we worked with i mean it's always a question that that, that that lovely people like yourself say who are the best who are the worst whatever but um we've had some complete idiots um for instance for me what a but anyway that's another, <laughs> oh, another nugget other people have been fantastic the certain lead actor of indiana jones on the on the last crusade what a lovely man yeah you have to run a competition to see if people can guess who that is he if you if you're pouring you're rain on a plane sorry you don't put him up flying a plane oh it, anything on the set that's interesting that actor would go up oh how does that pump work if the fire brigade are pumping more. He's such a nice guy, such a nice guy. My wife falls lovely, we finished shooting. We're doing the catacomb sequence with all the rats or whatever on Indy and the Last Crusade, just before we shoot the opening bit where the hat is floating oh, by. The, the ship has sunk. And um, old Harrison um, comes out the water and um, falls has got a can of Coke and he's like, could I get a drink of your Coke? And falls is like, <laughs> And she, she afterwards, we found around the back of the set, sucking this can, <laughs> this can of gosh, She didn't clean her teeth for a week. Like Matt, Matt Damon, we did, um, we did a couple of um, Matt Damon films, you know, with the Born Supremacy and all that, yeah. where the the, the 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 car goes off the river in Goa and he's right. trapped, and the girl dies and all that. But of course, on the end, he, he, he I've got a lovely picture of Foz, and. Um, he he just gave us such a snog at the end of the film and i went click and i thought yeah that's that's great and same with clint eastwood falls was working with clint all day um on this movie and um at the very end she turned to me and said oh mr eastwood i just like to say i've loved all of your films and i think did. and he said come here darling and just again snogged her and suddenly got a picture so falls's snog gallery is sort of <laughs> building up um no, so and you've obviously with the all the bonds. Have you worked with all of them? Uh, we've worked. I've worked. I've been lucky enough to work on five bonds, mm -hmm. um, and so we've worked with um, um, uh, you know peers. And um, I did the last um, three with underwater. You know, with underwater in. Um, probably my favourite. Actually, I like um, uh, Casino Royale. To so to work out, you know how do you get 60 people in a set mm. where there's only a stairway a stairway running around the edge how do you make that go up and down 20 feet how do you make it tilt left right north south east west by 10 degrees at the push of a button and how do you not stop yourself going mad from working in there for two well for six weeks mm -hmm. um as well as the underwater stuff and then Eva, who's obviously very scared of the water, um, 
and then Bond himself, who's on his first Bond, um, uh, you know, he was fantastic to work with. And, and it was just such a buzz. And in a way... He was fairly okay in the water, I would have thought. Yeah, oh yeah, he, he's, he was... Well, again, he's playing Bond, you know what I mean? You're, you're not going to go like, you know, hey. oh, you expect me to talk. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bond, I could not. It's like, oh, no, I don't want to go in. <laughs> uh, and that's why I didn't get the, to the last Bond job, because... They, they thought that was, although LGBTQT and all of that, they thought I was being just a bit too wimpy for Bond. I don't know why. I had no idea. Um, and that was fantastic because, but for me, the biggest buzz is this camera because I imagine at times, perhaps, you know, up to if the film is successful, you know, I don't know, Star Wars, Bond, whatever, and you've got maybe 50, 100 million people inside this white box. And you're saying, oh, thank you for trusting me. Come and look at this. Let me, let me show you something you might not have seen before and, and entertain you. And to me, I think that sums up the joy of the job that I've had that trust put into me by the audience to show them interesting things. Yeah, yeah in the underwater world. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's a good point where I think to round it off and then go yeah. to our set questions. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. Go on. Oh, I'm nervous now. <laughs> OK, um, so these are the same question for anyone who's not listened to us for the, uh, before. So we have these set questions that we ask all of our guests and it's good to you can see how uh, well, just get, get different, different answers. answers yeah. and all, but sometimes you get the same, you know, so it's quite yeah. What dive location is on your wish list or bucket list and why? I think, to be honest, it, it's still, even though I've worked there, I don't know, 32 times, it's still the Red Sea because you have got this rift valley being pulled apart. That means for an ordinary diver, without being technical or going super deep, you've got from the surface going down all of the reef fish here and then all of the deeper pelagics, the deeper water fish, which you can see, as well as the odd shipwreck, etc. So you can have almost any, literally almost any diving experience from dolphins to the majesty of the deep ocean, right down to just macro at this big. And it's all in, in, in the Red Sea. And I think that my biggest regret is, as fantastic as we all know and have heard of Ras Mohammed, etc., having dived down in Sudan, how much more there is to unveil when all the politics and everything get finished um, for us to go even further south in the Red Sea, because there are amazing things to see. So for me, uh, La Mer Rouge, um, the, the Red Sea, that for me would still be number one. Yeah, yeah, and just outside of that, do you get to do recreational diving yourself? Can't stand it. It's so boring. <laughs> because you know what? I'm really serious. If, <laughs> if we went on an amazing dive somewhere and I saw the most incredible thing and I didn't have my camera, I'd be like, no, don't show me that. Don't show me that. Did you so, um, I last dive, dove, dive, dived. Um, it, it probably, I just want to be, I want to give a real honest answer here. Um, the last um, dive was in U stage, and that was um, uh, filming a little student film all about a guy who goes swimming, his father's pushing him too hard, he loves the water, but he can't quite make the winning race. So they, they got hold of me and we worked for nothing just to help them out, just to add some really exciting different angles. Yeah. Um, so that was the time there. In the water, it was probably um, in a lake where we did a car um, being fired off into the lake. And the guy firing the car, I'm saying, well, where's the car going to end? And he gets a stone and goes like, <clears throat> just there, oh no, just a bit, hang on, hang on, I'll get another stone out. Just there, but just, I said, well, let's get some white paint and just put a big X on the water and it can hit that, you know. And I'm in the water as the car's coming way straight towards me. Did you get a chance to pleasure dive still? Um, to be honest, not so much because I, I, I think I've logged over 9,000 dives or whatever. Oh. And um, um, by now, without sounding awful, it's a, it's, 
it's a little bit of a busman's holiday and I would because we do so much diving with our film work yeah. and such variety of work I'd rather save the excitement are you recording all this you know so you can look back you know and think well that uh, that day you know are you still keeping some form of a log of what yeah, well, and technically I'm supposed to keep an HSC log um but you know you get a bit, uh, you stage, uh, you stage, uh, Red Sea, well, no, maybe Red Sea, Malta, yeah, right, Malta in, because um, I've got so many log books, they're, they're a bit full now, so I don't want to be an, an idiot and sound blasé, but um, um, not so much. <laughs> oh, what now? I've got a feeling you're going to ask what I want to put on a billboard. Yeah, that comes a bit later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just a, a simple one what's your favorite marine animal and why do you know everyone uh, not everyone i know that many people say oh uh a dolphin <laughs> because they you know they want to come back as dolphin. but my goodness me the work i've done with, with with dolphins where you know when you stroke and touch the dolphin it feels exactly like a boiled egg with the shell removed. If you ever touch a boiled egg with a shell removed, that's the body of the dolphin. I mean, I've made several of my own films about um, um, whales and dolphins and worked with dolphins. And I think the best I ever saw was when we were in um, uh, the southwest of the Seychelles near the Amaranth Islands and at six in the morning we opened the window and there were 400 dolphins all going past, all, go all going off hunting for their, for their bacon and eggs or for their breakfast or their muesli and on every single level with that creature um, it's just been, I've been more and more and more rewarded and had my imagination exploded by the ability, even now we still don't fully uh, appreciate th their history. And as a metaphor for the underwater world to sell the beauty um, of something that we are very successfully trying to screw up all the time um, with pollution and that, I can't think of a better uh, representative of the underwater world. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. So if you could take three people to the underwater world, they could yeah. be past, present, family friends who would you take and why i would only take one person okay <laughs> and that would be um a frenchman and that would be louis bouton because for louis um in the 1890s or so he had no idea what he was doing for me with some of his early work helping to be a stepping stone for all the other people um, like, you know, Hans Haas, who, who I've dived with Hans, and then um, many other people, well-known people in this industry we've worked with. And so it's just nice to go right back to the first person. And I would just love him to, to be there next to me underwater with my camera and him saying, what, what on earth are you doing, you know? And, and I think that that would be him. And in fact, that's why we've, um, for my own feature, um, this is only just a little picture that we've made but here we've got Louis mm. and his girlfriend is in a hot air balloon underwater where she is painting because you can you paint on water sorry Did you draw that yeah yeah um yes wow. but 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 it took three years um and so to have a little film with him as a photographer Mm. how can we get our underwater story going well the girl that is in love with him she loves painting and so I copied a, a scoop um, a Cousteau diver Andre Laban who paints underwater so we have her a hundred years ago uh, painting and wanting to paint underwater and him with his camera her painting making this balloon and it gets cut by somebody and off it goes and there's the the whole of our life balancing art versus science and that's that's everything there's photography why do you bother painting i can capture exactly what we can see yes but art might capture the soul which the camera won't mm. yeah. that's who i would take underwater <laughs> oh do i want a hoarding because <laughs> i did think <laughs> of one <laughs> hey! what is your uh, favorite piece of dive equipment and why 
any regulator that works. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Any regulator that works. I remember Thames, some Thames diving company, or whatever, uh, in the Fulham Palace Road, and I bought um, a conch shell or something, some, some, I don't know what it was, some regulator. Um, go off for a dive at the weekend, and well, all this water's coming in, and I had to realise that, oh, I do need that person to be with me, share air, and of course, you know, you're going to be British, you're not going to come up and be sensible, you're going to do the whole dive, because you've got another three quarters of an hour underwater. <laughs> and I took that regulator back to Thames Water Sports, and the guy went, what, it's letting in water, is it? Oh, okay. Turns around and puts it on the shelf to sell it to the oh, next no. person. Yes. Thought, oh my God. But it was the 70s, what can I tell you? Mm. Um, if he can remember the 70s, you weren't there. So mm. to me, any, regu <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any regulator that works, and, 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 I'm, and I'm being really serious, I just want the stuff to work so I can get on with my job, you know. So nearly the last question. Um, so you've been in the water all day, been for a yep. day, you've been diving. When you come out, what's your favourite meal to have? Where's your sort of is it a car? Oh, you know, that is such a good that is such a good question. I think because it's all a bit bland underwater and our catering is sometimes not the best, anything with a lot of flavour. So it's either going to be um, an Indian Thai or something with a lot of flavour. Where's your curry level there? Where's your chili level? Ooh. If you've got three chilies, I pretend to be a really strong man and do two mouthfuls of three chilies. But then, but then I'd be just like I was on my casting session for Bond. <laughs> I, so I'm probably, you know, I'm being honest, I'd say two chilies would be it. <laughs> but um, yeah, because at the end of the day, you've got to swallow the stuff and enjoy it a bit. Unless it's an excuse for more beer. Um, so final question so if you could put something on a billboard uh, metaphorically speaking non-commercial whether it be a statement an image could be a video a question what would you put on it to get out there? I, I would I would like to release a series of adverts to be seen on what they call a 48 sheet a really big poster and the and you know one shoreline completely clogged with plastic but with the letters h2 but instead of o just o mm. so it's like h2 oh, what are we doing and then just multiply that with all the different backings of you know the nets underwater the um the pollution the uh, the the smashed up reefs the reefs that are all bleached out um and all the you know sea levels only having to go up by two degrees is really serious and 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 you know or i put a big advert up saying watch one of attenborough's fantastic programs which is going out this weekend mm -hmm. about extinction because yeah. we're all like oh poor dolphins poor us but that's all bollocks it's poor the world yeah. i think it's something like a million species in and endangered so we have to end uh, being a bit serious. I mean, the beauty of the underwater world that I've unlocked and hopefully shared with audiences around the world has been an amazing uh, thing to have. But to, um, to, to go back to the original dives that I had and come forward just in 35, 40 years to see the incredible um, selfish damage that we're doing and it's not enough to put five quid in a tin for Greenpeace and think, oh, I've done my bit. It's, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's serious stuff. And yeah, it need, well, Dave Glattenborough is, yeah, in the Sounds like a film that's waiting to be made as well. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But the trouble is, anyone trying to raise money for, for awareness now, you've got such a backlash. I know we tried with our film whale song in trying to raise a few thousand pounds, um, trying to raise, you know, people feel in the way that they've put money in the tin, people feel now more than ever before we've given or because of COVID 
and it's it's you know nature or us maybe um reaping the, as you sow so shall you reap we're reaping the whirlwind mm -hmm. and that's the problem isn't it because we need so much research into just keeping us alive it's very easy to take the eye off the ball of all the other species who we share the world with mm -hmm. both in the air on land and in the sea so that's one of our problems with covid that it can cause us to shift focus but within a few years hopefully that will be gone and maybe it's a good thing maybe we can sit the stand and the people who survive it can say oh my god what's going on we've got to pay so much more attention to to the real world hopefully. yeah mm. and just talking of covid how has it affected your um sort of productions have you is it affected yes well for sure the film business has closed um, had closed down but now they've opened recently with um uh, Jurassic Park and live action version of Cinderella but because Foz who's resting in the back room she doesn't need to hear all this ego rubbish again for the 8,000th time um, because Foz is also a nurse um, she's been um, organizing um, swabbing for the crew of um, Cinderella so that everyone is swabbed so that you can work together in a fairly close mm -hmm. environment still taking precautions um mm. but we are as human beings um which we seem to do very well we're learning to adapt all the time so foz has been organizing all of that um swabbing i get swabbed regularly every week or two because of any film work you know you forget the actors they're just like us they're human beings you can't afford to get any of us to give it to each other mm. so we're all fairly regularly swabbed it doesn't mean that I haven't come to love that stick jammed right up my nose and then stuck down my throat. You know, that's what will get through us all. Humour. I like that. <laughs> oh, it's been really, really good talking really? to you. Yeah. It's my pleasure. And guys, thank you for bothering. My ego and me is still here. But it, it, I think that you two, with what you've done and some of the other things I've seen, definitely are unsung heroes because it's all about revealing this 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 weird and wacky underwater world to divers and non-divers yeah. as well. And if you can appeal to a few some kids as well, because yeah. they're they're us tomorrow, aren't they? You know, exactly. then but I think to you two, well done for what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Kind of no, that's really good. Yeah, and we'll carry on doing our best yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for your time though. Thank you. Hey, oh, I think you realised it wasn't a chore. <laughs> no, it's been lovely. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. I hope it's been great. It has. Yeah, thank you okay. Much. Have a good one. All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So we're back. Uh, well, that's brilliant. So, Jen, you like? Yeah, still smiling. Yeah, so, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it's definitely something to cheer you up. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. And I think, um, you know, kind of try not to listen to the news, don't we? And um, so hopefully, you know, that should cheer you all up. And um, it certainly did us. And, it, you know, uh, just listening back, it makes me laugh and giggle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and on the day it was just like wow you know so really can't wait to get mike back at some stage yeah Looking forward to that. Yes. we were we are hoping that to go down to the studios and have a look around aren't the we so stage, yeah, but obviously absolutely. with covid and what have you um that's kind of being put on the back burner for now yeah, so but it's there so. but it's there yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and he has got a website. Um, you can look at what he's done, and again, that's in the show notes on the podcast. So yeah, you can explore a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. So don't forget them show notes. Don't forget us where to go to for a power lens camera. Don't forget to go there if you're in the marketplace for a DJI drone as well. Yeah. Uh, we are talking to partners and affiliated partners all the time. So watch out for our social media for what's coming up also um you know we've got some really interesting i'd love to tell you who but i can't <laughs> um because one group of people are actually in iceland at the minute yeah yeah so are. you know there is some exciting people lined up so they get back. There. yeah um you know so you know keep an eye out for what our social media of for who's coming out yeah, yeah. And also coming up 
Jen, we have... We've got... Chris. We've got a lady in wellies. We have wet wellies, actually. Yeah? Hunter wellies. <laughs> no, wet wellies. Wet wellies. Yeah. Gr- yeah. She goes in caves. Right, okay. In in, in a wellies? Well, I expect so. Right, That's okay. Different. So who's yeah. coming up? Christine Grossart. Grossart. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Okay. So there we are, Christine. You're next. Yep. So we look forward to chatting to her yeah absolutely so uh, that'd be good and uh, don't forget if you've got any queries questions feedback uh, ideas for potential guests that's always a good one yeah absolutely you know everyone's going to be sitting around twiddling their thumbs at the moment so let's let's get them on board let's get them and um, let's see what they've got to tell us about their diving yeah it'd be good, good to hear yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so. Uh, please do. So episode 39 will be out in yeah, another week or so, I guess. Yep, yeah, there we go. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and we will be speaking to you very soon. Yeah. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. That's why I'm dreaming of the sea and the ocean breeze. Waves crashing over me, the sun.